Hi, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own skull bomb. We're going to use some modifiers, textures and shader nodes. It's been a lot of fun creating this one, so let's dive right in. Okay, we'll start off by adding a UV sphere. So press Shift A, Mesh and add a UV sphere. And press Tab to go into Edit Mode and press 3 to go into Face Select. And then select these top faces. And then we'll increase our selection. So go to select, select more or less, and then select more. It will increase our selection and press Shift R to redo their last action. And then we'll press E to extrude it up a tiny bit. And then press S, Z, 0 to flatten the top. And then press S and we'll scale it up. There we go. Now go to select, select more, less, and then press E. Extrude it down and then S to scale it down a tiny bit. And then we'll go to a modifiers tab and then we'll add a bevel modifier with four segments and we'll change the amount to 0.05. And then we can press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier, right click, shade auto smooth. There we go, that's our bomb. So now we'll go into front view by pressing 1 on our numpad or uh, open a view menu with your tilde key. And then we'll create the skull. So if you select the bomb, press tab to go into edit mode. And then make sure you're in face select mode. And then we'll select uh, six faces here. We'll select these six fa faces. And then we'll go eight wide on those three. And then we'll select six again here. And then we'll press shift D and enter to duplicate. And then press P and then we'll separate it by selection. Now we can press tab to leave edit mode and we can select our new object. Then press tab to go into an edit mode. And then press 1 to go into vert select. Select half of the verts. And press X and V to delete the vertices. We can remove the bevel modifier. And then we'll add a mirror modifier. And then we'll move that one above our subdivision and we'll enable clipping. There we go. And now I'll select this vert here and I'll press Ctrl B to bevel and then V to bevel this vert. And then I'll get something like that and then press X and F to delete the face. And that creates kind of like a tooth look. And then we'll press hold click on this vert and press G twice so you can move it along the edge. And then you can just move it up. Okay, now we're going to smooth this skull out a bit. So I'm selecting that verb, press G twice, and that one, and just try and make a nice smooth skull shape. You can make the shape however you like. There we go. Put down a tiny bit. That one in. Down. And there. Okay. Now I'll go into face select and I'll select these two faces and I'll press X and F. And there we go. Now I'll go back into vert select by pressing 1. Now I can shape the eye the same way we shape the rest. Press G twice while selecting a vert. You can just move them around. You can press set and toggle X-ray to maybe see the shape a bit clearer. And just play around with these shapes a tiny bit. A bit. Move that one a bit to the side. And that's looking pretty good. That one down a tiny bit. There, yeah. I think that looks like a pretty awesome shape. Now I'll um, go to our mirror, mirror modifier. Select the drop down and I'll apply it. I'll press set and toggle X ray back. And then now we'll tab into edit mode and then I'll press A to select all and then E and Y to extrude it. And then I'll press Ctrl R to add a loop cut and move it to the left and Ctrl R to add one in the middle. Then G and Y and I can just move it in just a tiny bit. I'll increase the subdivision to three on both as well. And there we go. Maybe move it out just a tiny bit. There. Okay, yeah, that looks awesome. Now select the bomb, press tab to go into edit mode. 
select this third here in the middle press shift s and then cursor to select it tap to leave edit mode and then we can go into front view we'll press shift a curve and we'll add a path press tab to go into edit mode select these left two verts press x and v to delete them and then we can select right two and we can kind of just move those up and make like a nice little curve here there just like that and then we can leave edit mode we'll go to our curve geometry here to geometry and then we'll add some depth to it there we go and then i'm gonna move it in just a tiny bit and now i'll go to object convert convert it to a mesh press tab to go into edit mode press 2 to go into edge select hold alt and select this outer loop and then just extrude that out then press f to fill it and then press ctrl b to bevel it and then with your mouse wheel you can increase the curves then increase the bevels there we go and then press ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier we can right click shade auto smooth then maybe place it play around with the placement a tiny bit so okay i think that looks pretty sweet okay now i'll select this object select this face here in the end press shift s and then cursor to selected now leave edit mode and now we'll add a cube and then i'll press ctrl 3 to add a subdivision modifier i'll go to my modifiers and i'll apply the subdivision modifier tap to go into edit mode and then i'm scaling it down and then i'll go to the right side view and then i'll select this word go back to front and i press o or this icon here Activate proportional editing and then press G and X. And we can kind of make like a flame shape of it. There. Just once more a bit point here. Okay. And then we'll press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision. And then we'll add a displace modifier. I'll move that above the subdivision. Click on new. And then here go to textures and then we'll select marble like that and then we can play around with these tiny bit i think turbulence too we'll leave we'll make it four i'll go back to my modifiers and then decrease the strength and then just have it very slightly there that looks nice now can right click shade out as move Okay, go back into front view. You can place around, play around with your placing a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, now we'll start adding the camera. I'm going to press Shift C to reset our 3D cursor to the center. Press Shift A and add a camera. And then press G and Y, move it back. And then go back into camera view by pressing zero on your numpad. And then we'll go into our output settings and we'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. And then we can press G and Z twice and move it back a tiny bit more so that the whole bomb fits. I'll select the bomb and I'll move it a tiny bit to the center of our camera view. And then press R twice. We can rotate it. I think that rotation looks... Yeah, I like how that looks. And then we can select this. There. Yeah, I think that looks awesome. And then we'll press Shift A, Mesh, and add a plane. Press RX90 to rotate it. And then press G and Y, and we'll move it to the background. Go into camera view, press Tab to go into edit mode, and then scale it up so it covers your whole background. Like that. And then we'll go and press Z, and we'll go into rendered view, and then we'll start adding some lighting. So press Shift A, light and add an area light press r x 90 minus and then press g y 4 to move it back go to your light settings and then we'll increase the size so it covers the whole camera and then we'll make it a power of uh, let's start with 600 you can increase this later but i like the kind of rim light it gives okay and then press shift a light 
and add another area light. Press G and Z. We'll move that up. Press period and change your pivot point to 3D cursor. And then we'll press RX 60 and RZ 45 minus. And then we'll change our shape to disc. Size to 2. And then we'll change the power to 250. Might be a bit strong. Let's keep it at 200 for now. Just G and Z twice. And then we'll move it just back a tiny bit. Now we'll press Shift D to duplicate. And then press R to rotate. Z to rotate on the Z axis. And press 120 to move it to the other side of the bomb. And press R and X twice to rotate it on the X axis. And then we can there move it to the bottom. The other side of the bomb. I'll press G and Z twice to move it back a bit. And maybe make it a tiny bit weaker at 175. Also going to give this a slight blue color, I think. There. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. And we'll add a light to our background as well. So if we press Shift A, light, and add another area light, press RX 90 to rotate it. G and Y. Move it towards your background, change the shape to disc, and then size to 3, and then the power to 1000. And then we'll go into camera view and see how that looks. Um, might be a bit too strong. There, 750 looks pretty sweet. Okay, let's uh, start adding some materials. So we'll go first to our render settings we'll change the engine to cycles device to gpu compute viewport samples i'm changing it to 128 and then the render samples to 512 and i'm also going to change the color management look to high contrast okay now we'll select our background we'll go into material tab and then we'll add a new material we'll call that one background and then we'll change the base color to B4E8FF and then for the bomb we'll select the bomb go to your shading tab and then we'll go into view camera go into the rendered view and then we'll add a new material for our bomb and then we'll change the base color to 273052. I want the roughness to be 0.75. And I will add a tiny bit of texture to it. So press Shift A, search, add a noise texture. And press Shift A, search, and add a bump node. And I will connect the noise texture to the height of the bump. And then the bump goes into the normal. And then we can increase the scale of the noise to maybe 100. Decrease the strength of the bump. 0.1. Just a soft. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. Now we can go and do the glow. So with the bump selected, press tab to go into edit mode. Press 3 to go to face select. And then select all the faces that are the eyes. And it could be that like maybe like one, like I don't have it here, but in your render, it might be that like one of these faces actually comes out of the other side of your bomb. If that is the case, you can with control R add a loop cut right there to cut it off. And then you could like select the faces just so it like you don't have the problem of the glow effect that sticking out of the skull. But for me, uh, that that's not happening, but I just want to make sure. Okay, with these faces selected, go to the Material tab and add a new Material slot. Then add a new Material, we'll call that Glow, and then click Assign. There we go, I'm going back into Camera View now. And then for our Glow effect, we'll scroll down, we'll change the Emission Color to 22C4B3. And then the emission strength, uh, let's make it 10 for now. We can always uh, make it a bit more powerful later. Um, okay, then for the skull, we'll add the same nodes as for our bomb. So we could go to the bomb, and then we'll copy these two nodes, go to the skull, 
add a new material, name it skull, and then we can press Ctrl V to paste it, and then we just have to connect the bomb to the normal. There we go. And I'm also going to increase the roughness of this 2.75. There, that's everything for our skull. Now here for the rope, it's just going to be a very easy base color. To add a new material, we'll call it rope. And then for your base color, we'll make it E7A05E. And that's it. And then the flame. And a new material, we'll name it flame. This one will have some settings, so bear with me. We're changing the base color to 7F0300. We're changing our roughness to 1. And then the emission is going to be BE6327 with a strength of 200. Like that. Okay, and now we're going to add some nodes. So Shift A, S, and add a layer weight. And then Shift A, S, and then add a mix color. And then this facing goes into the vector. And then we'll put the result into the alpha. And then our B is going to be black. And we'll make our A BC5D00. And then the layer weight will increase it to 0.9 maybe. Yeah, I like how 0.9 looks. Just a very soft flame effect. Okay, then we want to change our world color. I'm going back to the layout tab. Go to the world tab and then color is going to be 47497F. There we go. And then all we have to do is render. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or requests, drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to see your results, so be sure to tag me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. See you soon!